Hello and welcome to our daily news. Here come the headlines. Prime Minister Nguyen Tấn Dũng meets with Chinese Vice President Xi Jinping upon his arrival in Nanning for the ninth ASEAN China Expo and Investment Summit. Foreign Minister Phạm Bình Minh and German counterpart Guido Westerwelle discuss measures to deepen bilateral strategic partnership. Indonesia hosts an international seminar on peace and stability in the East Sea and Asia Pacific. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dũng met with Chinese Vice President Xi Jinping after a bread in Nanning, the capital of China's Guangxi Chuang Autonomous Region, on September 20th for the 9th ASEAN China Expo and China ASEAN Business Investment Summit. We'll find out more. Prime Minister Dũng affirmed unceasingly consolidating and strengthening the friendly and comprehensive cooperative ties with China is a consistent long-term and strategic policy and one of the top priorities of Vietnam's foreign policy. Vice President Xi stressed that the Chinese party, state and people are ready to, together with Vietnam, deepen their comprehensive strategic cooperation partnership. The two leaders agreed that the Vietnam-China friendship, fostered by various generations of leaders and people, is a valuable asset of the two parties, states and peoples, and it should be inherited, preserved and developed. They said, continuously strengthening political trust is of great importance to both countries in the current situation and reach a number of important common perceptions and specific measures to boost bilateral ties in the future. The leaders also agreed on the need to persistently maintain peace and stability in the East Sea, satisfactorily resolve every issue through peaceful negotiations starting from the strategic high of the two countries' relationship. On the fringes of the event, on September 21st, Prime Minister Zhu met with Lao counterpart Tongsing Tamavong and Myanmar President Ten Sen. Vietnamese Foreign Minister Phan Bing Minh and his German counterpart Guido Westerwelle discussed a wide range of measures to deepen bilateral strategic partnership in the future during their talks in Berlin on September 20th. Meeting with the press after the talks, Guido Westerwelle noted that Germany-Vietnam strategic partnership is active, calling the decision to establish the partnership a purpose political and visionary one. He affirmed his country's support for Vietnam in the negotiation process on a free trade agreement with the EU. Westerwaller expressed concerns about recent developments in the region, calling on concerned parties to settle disputes by peaceful measures. According to Minister Ming, the two sides noted an increase in the exchange of delegations at all levels, especially at high-ranking level, to create a momentum for the intensive and effective development of bilateral cooperation. He said he agreed with Minister Westerwaller to foster the two countries' education and training cooperation. Foreign Minister Ming is currently in Germany for an official visit. On September 19th, he attended the Vietnam-Germany Trade Investment Forum in Frankfurt in the state of Hessen and had talks with the Hessen state governor, Volker Bufferon. The Cambodian Ministry of National Defense held a gathering for military personnel trained in Vietnam in Phnom Penh on September 20th. This activity marked the Vietnam-Cambodia Friendship Year and the 45th anniversary of the two countries' deep diplomatic ties. The event, chaired by Cambodian Deputy Prime Minister and Defense Minister General Thia Beng, brought together 500 officers representing more than 12,000 Cambodian military personnel who used to study in Vietnam. General Thie Ben stressed that over the past 45 years, the two countries' solidarity and friendship have been nurtured by patriots of both sides, helping the two countries overcome our difficulties and build the great unity bloc. 
Vietnamese ambassador to Cambodia Ngo Anh Dũng spoke highly of the meaning of the ceremony, saying that the veterans, soldiers, military officers and experts are living witnesses to the solidarity between the two countries' armed forces. On behalf of Cambodian military personnel trained in Vietnam in the 1979-2012 period, General Nghe Ang said that they will work hard to reinforce and develop the solidarity, friendship and close cooperation between the two armies and peoples. The Vietnam-U.S. Aviation Corporation Working Group convened its second meeting in Ho Chi Minh City on September 20th. It heard the attendance of U.S. Consul General in the city and representatives of the Ministry of Transport and Communications. The Vietnam-U.S. Aviation Cooperation Program was initiated by the U.S. Trade Representative Office earlier this year to carry out priority projects and increase cooperation between the two countries in aviation. The event looked at ways of ensuring security and safety and U.S. assistance to aviation projects in Vietnam to help maintain sustainable growth in the domestic aviation sector in the coming years. Vietnam's aviation sector has enjoyed an annual average passenger growth rate of 15% and 12% in freight. At present, five airlines operate 40 domestic and 45 international flights to 15 countries and territories worldwide. The ongoing 32nd section of the Asia Pacific Fisheries Commission, opened in Da Nang City on September 20th, is working on the management of fisheries and aquaculture management in the region. Statistics revealed Asia Pacific recorded an annual seafood catch of 48.7 million tons in 2010, accounting for half of the world's total output. Fish farming in the region also gave an output of 53.1 million tons, making up 89% of the world's aquatic volume. Participants to the three-day section will review the recommendations put forward at the fourth regional consultative forum of the Asia Pacific Fisheries Commission. They will discuss how to assist fishermen improve their livelihood. An international seminar on peace and stability in the East Sea and Asia Pacific took place in Jakarta, Indonesia, on September 20th. Indonesian Defense Minister Purnama Jus Giantoro affirmed that maintaining peace and stability in the East Sea is a legitimate matter of concern of many countries. Therefore, he stressed that ASEAN should give high priority to the finalization of the formulation of the Regional Code of Conduct COC, on the East Sea and to engage China as soon as possible. Participants to the event stressed that ASEAN should take responsibility and initiative to prevent the escalation of disputes in the East Sea. They noted that China's declaration of the nine dotted lines in the East Sea is groundless. Vietnamese representative Dr. Do Xuân Vinh highlighted ASEAN's efforts in dealing with the East Sea issues. The State Bank of Vietnam has allowed the Saigon Jewelry Company, SJC, to produce 350,000 tiles of gold from damaged SJC gold bars and other brands of gold to supply the domestic market. The Saigon Jewelry Company began the production of 350,000 tiles of gold, equivalent to 13 tons, right on September 20th. Global gold prices have seen increases in recent days. The State Bank of Vietnam has taken various measures while keeping a close eye on fluctuations on the world market from making proper adjustments to stabilize the domestic gold market. A white elephant weighing six tons rampaged through fields near Thanh Sơn Camu in the southern province of Đồng Nai on September 20th, destroying crops and fruit trees. 
According to Dingguan's Forest Management Office, it was one of the head of ten wild elephants that recently trampled crops and threatened the safety of residents in the area. Local agencies and residents struggled to scare the elephant away. They said wild elephants have been seen fairly regularly in the district in recent years as their forest feeding ground are becoming rarer and their habit has been decimated. One resident in the area was killed in encounter with wild elephants. From 2009 to 2011, nine elephants were found dead in forests in Dongna province. Experts say with this disease in the population, wild elephants in the province are likely to become extinct in a handful of years. You've been with me today. Thanks for watching and please tune in for more updated news.